2, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, test, test, test. Doi zece, doi zece. from the EU member states. The Romanian Minister of Culture and the National Identity, Valer Daniel Brad, together with the European Commissioner for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, uh, Tibor Novojic, will present you the outcomes of the meeting. I will now give the floor to the Romanian Minister of Culture and National Identity, Mr. Valer Daniel Brad. Minister, you have the floor. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a press conference here today. It was a very fruitful day, very interesting day, a day that unfortunately was overshadowed by the sad events in Paris, the tr cultural tragedy that took place given the inestimable value of that beautiful cathedral, Notre Dame de Paris. And I do hope that very soon it can be rebuilt. Obviously, those of us who are members of the European Union will contribute, and not just members of the European Union. So I would like to thank you for giving us the time for the press conference today. I don't want to speak at great length. I just want to set out a few of the conclusions of our work today. It was a very interesting day, as I said, very fruitful, lots of very good ideas, ideas that will be put into practice, I'm sure. The informal meeting of cultural ministers in Bucharest reaffirmed the importance of keeping heritage at the center of European policies. We also need to have sustainable financing of the cultural and creative sectors through the creation of new opportunities at an EU level. The ministers of culture have stressed the important elements in terms of cooperation at a European level in the field of culture. We need to take an ambitious strategic approach in defining new common objectives. The meeting was overshadowed, as I said, by the tragic events in Paris. The Cathedral of Notre Dame, which was a witness to France's history and a symbol of European Christianity, um, this was uh, engulfed in flames yesterday. Today, in Bucharest, Notre Dame didn't just belong to the city of Paris, but the entirety of the European Union, which expressed its solidarity with the French people. And we expressed our hope that this cathedral will be rebuilt in the near future. The European Year of Cultural Heritage 2018 represented a valuable source of inspiration for the actions carried out in member states. And these, this was an example of cooperation at a European Union level with a view to promoting our uh, values and common identity. The Romanian Presidency of the Council of the European Union proposed transmitting this heritage further on, stressing expertise, experience, and best practices generated by this year of cultural heritage. The member states of the European Union have set out the most important lessons learned from the European Year of Cultural Heritage. These will serve as a source of inspiration for future European policies in the field. We need to have a holistic approach to heritage. Digitization is very important to allow greater access to cultural phenomena. We need to have quality in the restoration of um, monuments and we need to get young people and their a variety of social categories involved in order to ensure that heritage remains a shared source of pride for all European citizens. All of the ministers of culture felt that beyond its spiritual intrinsic value, the cultural heritage plays an important role in sustainable and inclusive development in the European Union, given that we need 
need to take advantage of the momentum of the European Year of Cultural Heritage. When it comes to financing the cultural and creative sectors, and innovation was considered to be important in sketching out the future. Ministers felt that we need to have adequate funding to ensure the development of the cultural and creative sectors. Most member states recognize the importance of developing support structures such as clusters, transsectoral um, networks, uh, creative hubs, etc. We need to stress the role of innovation when it comes to the crossroads between the economy and art. Promoting the European cinematographic industry uh, is very important, and the media and audiovisual services directive was very important here, and we need to ensure effective transposition of this, given that this directive has created new opportunities for the promotion of European culture and cultural diversity in Europe. Along the same lines, most member states of the European Union felt that the effective and rapid transposition of the um, Directive on um, Intellectual Property is vital in order to allow broader access to cultural content in the online space and in order to ensure fair remuneration of right holders. From this point of view, the Romanian presidency was congratulated on wrapping up this file and it's considered to be a major success which will allow the cultural and creative sectors in the European Union to flourish and to promote cultural diversity. These were rather briefly the conclusions of today's conference. I would like to thank Mr. Tibor Navracic. Mr. Tibor Navracic, he came here today to Bucharest for this conference. It's a very important conference, as I said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Navracic. Please, Commissioner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me thank uh, Minister Beaz and, and the Romanian Presidency for organizing this very important event, which uh, could take stock of the state of the uh, culture and creative industries on the one hand, and uh, the legacy of the European Year of Culture Heritage on the other. As the minister already said, uh, unfortunately, it had a sad actuality. The devastating fire of the Notre Dame made this uh, council meeting uh, uh, very timely and uh, very urgent. While we were discussing uh, the importance of, of uh, Europe's uh, cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible, we were reminded by this devastating fire how vulnerable this uh, cultural heritage is. Um, the European Commission services is still mapping up and investigating the opportunities how we can help the French authorities in the restoration of this um, disaster. Uh, so far, um, we, we are collecting all those policy initiatives which are in my portfolio, for instance, we can help via the European Solidarity Corps, sending volunteers uh, to Paris, to the, to the site of the emergency situation. Also, we can, uh, we can fund uh, some um, change, exchanges of experts and, uh, and um, experiences uh, by Creative Europe, and uh, we are still collecting and looking for uh, other policy instruments to be at the disposal of the French authorities and uh, to help them who are in need. But back to the otherwise very interesting agenda of, um, of this uh, informal council. The first uh, point was uh, the financing and innovation of the culture and creative uh, sectors and uh, industries. Let me remind you that uh, Europe's culture and creative industry is a world-class um, branch of the, of the industry and we want to, to stay uh, that way. That's why our new work plan for culture 2019-2022 commits to helping to foster 
an ecosystem supporting artists, cultural and creative professionals, and European content, and we are working with the member states towards this goal. We are already doing a lot. Take, for example, the guarantee facility for SMEs under the Creative Europe program, which is improving access to finance for these sectors. Twelve agreements have already been signed with banks in nine countries, benefiting 800 enterprises, and more is to follow. Under the next long-term budget, after 2020, we intend to do more. We have proposed a budget of 1.85 billion euros for the successor to Creative Europe. This would enable us to keep supporting the development of all cultural and creative industries. We have also proposed to continue the work of Horizon 2020 in this area under the new Horizon Euro program. And we want to support creators via the Invest EU fund through microfinancing, for example. We also had the opportunity today to discuss the legacy of the European Year of Cultural Heritage and the connections between the past and the future. The European Year enabled us to reach out to large numbers of citizens across our continent, including many young people and those who do not normally engage with cultural heritage. I thank ministers today for their involvement and invited them to help me ensure that the European Year has an impact in the long term. At EU level, this will mean following through with the 65 actions we have committed to for 2019 and 2020 across many policy areas. This is an ambitious roadmap. We hope to see this ambition mirrored in the financial support for cultural heritage in the European Union's next long-term budget so that we can make the most of it in building a resilient and cohesive Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, we will take a few questions, and I would kindly, kindly ask you to state your name and the, institute, the um, media institution that you are representing. So, the floor is open for questions. We have any questions? Yes, please. I'm from Radio Romania Actualities. Of the 60 actions that support heritage, cultural heritage, how many involve Romania? The question is for the question is for the minister. Please. Thank you very much for the question. Now, obviously, given that we're a member of the European Union and all of these agreements were signed for all of the countries of the European Union, we're involved in all of the projects. Thank you. Yes, another one here in the front. I'm from Aja Press. I'd just like to ask the Commissioner, could you perhaps tell us a bit, something a bit more specific about the cathedral? Is there any specific aid? Have you any specific aid for the cathedral? Uh, the, the European Commission has no uh, emergency funds at the moment open. So the, uh, those services who are dealing with emergency situations are now mapping up the opportunities if we can mobilize any financial resources uh, which could be urgently forwarded to the, to the French authorities. What, what we can do is it what? Okay. Yes, yes. what we can do is uh, to, to give support and long-term funding for the restoration uh, procedure, for instance, we can send experts or we can fund the travel expenses of, of, the, of the experts sent by, by other EU member states, or, um, or we can send volunteers, or we can give via GRC, the Joint Research Centre is the, the in-house uh, scientific uh, service of the European uh, Commission. They make 3D mapping and drone uh, mapping. They can uh, do it uh, with Notre Dame, and uh, we can help the preparations for, for the restoration and the rebuilding procedure. Thank you very much. Do we have some other questions? Yes, please, behind. It's for you to answer. I, I'm Anna Harrison from Radio France International. I didn't understand exactly the, um, 
you you can send volunteers to Paris through what policy, the solidarity? I just didn't understand how it's called the instrument. Uh, the European Solidarity Corps is a three years old volunteering scheme in the European Union. Okay. There are more than 100,000 applicants at the moment, and we've uh, implemented uh, more than 10,000 uh, deployment. I mean, young young volunteers went to emergency sites or emergency situations and helped the local governments to to heal the situation there. And I have another question for both of of these officials. I was doing this story the other day about European funding, and uh, I talked to a few councillors a few experts, and I asked them about culture, and they started laughing at me. I felt very bad. And they said there is very little money, uh, European money for culture, and I would like more on that. Thank you. Well, you will have to convince the finance minister, some of the finance minister, and we will get more money for culture at European level. There, there's no such as European money. I mean, all the European monies are the contributions of the member states. So, unfortunately, I, I cannot have venture capital at the moment at European level. So. Would you like to add something, Minister? Yes, I'd just like to reply to this question. You know, whenever we discuss money, well, there's never enough anywhere. And when you're discussing culture, well, people are saying, why has so little been allocated? So, just as Ms. Mr. Navracic said, it's money coming from the EU, money coming from all of the EU states. And when they are allocated, when the money is allocated, well, the problem is usually at the level of the Ministry of Finance. Could you please repeat that? It depends on the funds you're asking about. Now, if you're talking about money allocated for culture at a European level, on, let's say, a young generation project, well, certain money has been allocated to that, and this money can be accessed by each state based on the projects they've submitted at a European level. If we're talking about within a country, well, obviously, it's a different situation. Uh, different but similar. Sure want but to add can, something. can I just, uh, just sure. remember, because mostly the, the cultural activities are funded by Creative Europe. Creative Europe's budget will be 1.85 billion euros in the next multi-year financial framework. But you can also have some funding from regional funds, for instance, or the European social funds. It, it, it's up to the profile of the project. So, and we would like to offer more synergies uh, in EU funds, so local uh, actors or local creators can uh, can apply for more EU funds coming from different policy areas. The last question, I saw a hand yes behind, please. I have a question for the Minister. On the uh, copyright directive, I know there are companies like Wikipedia or Google who were complaining about this directive. I'm just wondering what their complaints were and what's going to change with this directive. I'm referring to, for example, social networks. I think posts will be harder to see, for example. Could you maybe explain a bit more about this? Uh, you've got the wrong end of the stick, I think. No, it's not the case that things are going to be more difficult. The directive is a very good directive in order to protect concept, content, a correct, fair remuneration for those who produce content. And it could be a text, it could be a song, it could be a film, it could be a documentary, anything that's posted. And sometimes the people aren't paid as they are paid as, as much as they should be paid. They should be paid by people who use the content. And sometimes, due to the value of this content, these people get money off the back of the people who've actually made it. So this directive basically clarifies all of this. So once again, just so everyone can actually understand this, people have been criticizing us without actually understanding 
the directive. It's very easy to criticize. What you have to do is you've got to, to read the text of the directive. Read the text of the directive. Perhaps you don't understand what stage the directive is in at the moment. People are criticizing this. Now, I'm a mathematician, and uh, I need to draw the comparison. Uh, sometimes where, uh, it's extremely problematic. The directive was voted on yesterday. In about a month, the documents will be signed. And this directive is going to be transposed by each EU member state into its own legislation. This is a process that will take maximum two years. So once again, it's a welcome directive. It's a directive that is very much appreciated by the majority of member states, a significant majority of the EU member states. It's a directive that is designed to protect those who produce content, and it is to help those. It's not a question of Facebook posts, whether you see them quicker or, or not. No, we're not talking about social networks. So I just urge all those of you who haven't understood the directive, the text is there, read it, understand it. And if you don't understand it, we can help you explain it, help to explain it, and we can clarify what's in the directive. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you also. Uh, Minister, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending the press conference. It's ending here. Thank you all. Bye.